Well, time to do some services on uh, the Lincoln before I go home tonight. So I'm gonna do the engine flush. And I'm also gonna six quarts, 520, 820 filter. This is that uh, engine cleaning basic kit with the sulfuric acid that cleans everything out on the inside. So I'm gonna go run that through there right now. Now some of you may be asking what this is here. This is a cleaner that's extremely powerful. If you look in a previous video, you'll see a much larger version of an extreme situation where a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine was completely plugged up and we used their big commercial kit and we almost got that engine spotless inside. It actually started stopped rattling and everything. So I'm going to go dump this in the town car, run this for about 10 minutes at 1200 plus RPM just to get all the junk, which there probably is none. Now this engine usually comes out super clean, but I like to throw this in there every once in a while just to make sure everything's cleaned out. That's what it looks like inside and it smells like real sulfur. Yeah, so you're... So it's got this yellow tint like to it and it smells really like sulfuric-y. It's, uh, it's kind of rough smelling stuff. So I got everything dumped in. Um, maybe what I'll do is next week I'll detail this motor and stuff out. Maybe I'll do it tonight, I don't know. Maybe next week actually, because it's supposed to be 60 degrees next week. Let's run this motor around and get it, start getting this process rolling. Okay, pulling it in the shop right now. Try to get it in there and get the RPM up a little. Well, actually, I probably do most of the RPM increase outside and then pull it in. I pull up next to the building right here and get it going. My whole life is actually at 66%. Normally, I don't let it go full life before I do anything. I don't like doing that. I've never been a fan of this 5,000 mile oil change and I'm never going to be. So I'm just gonna continue doing it the way I do it. I put about 2,000, 2,500 miles on it and I change it, just, just how I am. I love my talent car. I went to get an original air filter, which would have been a 10, one of the original filters would have been uh, 1032 fa 1032 but ford actually has a cross to it which is the same one and it is a fa 1783 so i'm gonna put the air filter in while i'm now i'm currently getting it up in the air and i'm gonna drop everything the self is so strong when you pull the, the oil fil the, the filler cap Ooh. it almost makes your eyes water it's so strong I also found out we actually have the factory frame fuel filter in stock. So we're going to be giving it the works, everything, todos. Go drop that oil. Look how clean this shit always is. Always. This engine is so clean. Every time I change the oil, it's like crystal clean. Every time that engine is so clean, there's no dirt, there's no carbon buildup, there's nothing. Even when you look at the top of the piston, it's super clean. To keep this thing clean inside and out, I mean, I do the best I can. So, this is definitely a, a spa day for her. So, I'm pulling the frame filter now, I got the oil dropped. And this is just a push tab. Push it, push it towards the filter, push the tab in, and then pull it off. And then on this side over here, I've got a, what is a 5 sixteenths fuel line remover that I'm gonna slide up inside this collar. And then I'm gonna push it into that locking ring right there. But I'm gonna push it towards, I need two hands for that, but I'm gonna push it in there, unlock it, pull the fuel line off, and then I'm gonna un I'm gonna undo my clamp right here and pull my filter out and replace it. 
Okay, filter is installed. Everything's clamped back up, put down. Now, what I need to do is go up to the front, wipe off my little oil plug. And then, I'm over here, pull my filter out of there. It's an 820. And I actually went out and bought a set of mini oil filter pliers by Channel Lock, part number 209, to really get in here and get them out. So now I'm going to change the filter, get it back on the ground, dump the MOA in it. Oh, before I pull it down, I'm going to check and make it. I'm going to grease everything up real quick that's greasable here. Like you got your sway bar links and stuff like that. So I'm going to grease all the sway bar links up while I'm here, drop it down on the ground, put the MOA and stuff in it, and then... Um, the MOA is the oil supplement. Drop my oil and everything in there. And then start it. Let it run for a little bit. And then start my fuel injection. Cleaning. Okay, back on the ground. I'm going to pour the MOA additive in there. I spilled a little bit. It's alright. So the MOA additive is in. And now I'm going to drop all the oil in there. About five and a half quarts. Okay, we're finished with adding our oil in. But at this point, we want to hook the fuel injection kit up now. Because if we wait, we're defeating the, peep uh, the purpose of having the... We just changed the fuel filter and the fuel pressure is out of the fuel line. So I'd rather disconnect that now with the fuel line being uh, uh, no pressure on it. And just go ahead and disconnect the fuel line and hook all my fittings and stuff up to it now. So I'd use just a basic fuel line disconnect kit to get this fuel line off of here. I pulled, went ahead and pulled the collar off of it. Now I'm going to actually get the fuel line pushed forward, push the tool in, and then pull back at the same time. So I did uh, get a little pushback out of this here. Um, I used a, this is a three-quarter fuel line fitting. And it's kind of tough to get it in there, but you can't get it in there and push that spring back enough to get it to separate. Now I'm going to go get the fuel injection kit and get everything set up. So I got a fuel injection kit here and it hooks up this, this pressurized system and uh, I took the Valvoline fluid. What did I do with it? Where's my Valvoline can? Ah, here. I took the Valvoline can the rail and injector cleaner and I dumped it into that cylinder and I'll set this up to about 40 psi normal running pressure and then I got to go through here and I got to find the right fittings that I need for the system so I actually had to make this nipple out of another fitting this fitting clips onto here and then I put a barb in the quick connect I shove it in and then I tighten the fuel line down and then on this other end, on this side, I got to cap it off because there's going to be running pressure there. And I do have a cap for that. This is kind of a professionally made rigged fitting that goes here. So now fuel line pressure will be here when you key on. But I'm going to actually be running off the pressure. It's going from this line right into my fuel rail. So I'm going to tighten this up, get my air and stuff hooked up, get it set to 40 PSI on the gauge and start her up. All right, so I got my air line hooked up. And I've got it, it's right at about 35 PSI. I'm going to turn it up so I'm going to turn it up to about 40. Now I'm going to start it. Well, we got fuel in there. See the bubbles? So there it goes. Now fire it up. I let it run until there's nothing in here. Like you'll see little bubbles and it'll suds and it'll disappear. And then it's done. And then I'll hook the fuel line back up. When you have startup pressure on these, it's about 51, 52 PSI. But after it stabilizes, it comes down to about 38, 39 PSI and it's normal. So that's why I set this right at 40. Let's go check on the car. It's been running for a while.
still got fuel in there. Got a little bit of a leak right there, but I'm all right. I can see the little bubbles. But once I start to see bubbles inside here, then I know I'm about to be empty. All right, I heard it hesitating, so I ran over here real quick and shut it off before it died co completely. But see, no more fuel in there. It's dry. So. Pull shop air off of it, get everything put back away, get all my fuel lines clipped back in, key on, let it prime, start it, run the vehicle. Okay, she's uh she's up and rolling. Got everything put back together, fuel line clamp back in. The three-quarter plastic clamp that unconnects the two coming back this way on the supply line, it was a mother. So if you can get a thin, more like up updated designer set like the metal clamp when I showed you underneath the car um, that would be the way to go those plastic ones are a son of a gun to get in there I had to yank on that thing and push and I had to, you have to push the collar in to release the spring all the way around and it was a son of a gun getting it out but there's our spa day we did the fuel filter the air filter the motor flush new engine oil she's sounding pretty damn good right now so that's it. That's how you take care of it. And then we'll get in here in about a week or two. Probably the end of this week. Next week. I'm going to run it through the wash right now. But we'll get in here and detail all this engine bay and stuff up. Yeah, that stuff to reseal is set up real, real nice. Real good. I like that. Real nice and clean. Okay guys, that's it, and that's all she wrote. That's how you do your spa day services on your town car.